we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Welcome to episode 9 of Urgency of Change. This week's episode features Krishnamurti in conversation with psychotherapist David Shainberg. The conversation is titled Memory, Thought and the Illusion of Continuity. Next week's episode is a dialogue with renowned religious scholar Houston Smith. These podcasts are brought to you by Krishnamurti Foundation Trust, based at Brockwood Park in the UK. For more information about activities and programs at Brockwood, such as the Krishnamurti Retreat Centre, Brockwood Park School, and more about the Foundation, please visit our website at kfoundation.org. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. David Schoenberg trained at the American Institute for Psychoanalysis and worked in New York, He was a leading force behind the integration of Eastern and Western philosophies in the understanding of consciousness and experience. Schoenberg was the first to bring psychoanalysts and Eastern spiritual leaders together. He retired from practice in 1981 in order to devote more time to painting. Recorded in New York in 1983, the conversation between Krishnamurti and Schoenberg inquires into why illusion and thought have such power. What can a person do for another who is caught up in their illusions? Why do human beings give importance to their self-centered activity? The very idea of protecting oneself brings about isolation. The me is not something separate from memory. Memory is the only thing that continues, but represents something that is dead, finished. Our psyche is being programmed by ideologies which have been put together by thought. We can start? Okay, Christian G, the question I, I came up with is this. What do you think, or what, what is the, the power or the... the intensity that goes along with the immediacy, that illusions have such immediacy. In other words, why, why is it that illusion and what thought creates has such power and such mm-hmm. immediacy? That's question one, I will, and then somewhere along the line, what can a person do if, let's say, if I or if you see the illusion of my the immediacy in my illusions, and you see the, the, the quality of my illusions, what can a person do for another person who is caught up in their illusions? Those are two questions. So first of all, what do you mean by illusion? Well, when I use the word illusion, I'm, 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 sort of, I'm going from discussions we've had before where we talk about the fact that thought creates a reality. Thought, thought creates illusion. Creates illusion. Well, and, crea- and so therefore it is illusion, since it's making it up. So. And it has such immediacy. I mean, you know, uh, we all invest our thoughts with such intense needs. We've invested in security. I mean, what, what, do you, what is that, this immediacy in illusion or thought? When you use the word immediacy, does it mean the urge to fulfill, the urge to do something? Yeah. I don't quite understand the, when you use the word immediacy, what you mean by that? Well, when I, I'm using the word immediacy in the sense of uh, um, a reality, 
a um, if I really feel that I have I mean let's say this that if I imagine take it at two levels if I imagine myself falling off uh, a, a, a wall I'll jump so that thought and that imagination has immediacy a intensity if I have the thought that I could must you, could we express it differently sure go ahead yeah I don't I don't I'm not getting the meaning of what you're talking about well I'm really saying that we have thoughts that we invest with importance yes let's stick to that okay yes, yes. now what makes us invest it with such importance in other words how come we can't see I mean I, I'm really referring back to my work as a doctor where a patient comes in and will say you know terribly depressed if somebody died terribly depressed if their lover doesn't show up terribly depressed if they lose a job those are thoughts which have importance, but they have, for this person, it's as if it's the whole life has collapsed. That's what I mean by immediacy. Urgency. Of all is the urge of desire to fulfill. I'm not getting you there. Because I'm not, ca I'm not getting your meaning at all. Well, let me try another way. We talk a lot about what thought does. Yes. Uh, we said that thought is limited. Thought, whatever it does, whether in the technological world or in the psychological world, is limited. Exactly. I mean, a person who is concerned about himself all day long his whole attitude towards life and towards the world is very, very, very small. Right. Now, how come he, if thought is limited, but actually thought begins to seem like it's unlimited? It, that's a, that's just an idea, that's, that's an illusion. illusion. Well, but that actually happens. So what is your question then? So what makes that happen? In other words, uh -huh. what makes thought appear so unlimited and we invest it with such unlimited virtues who does this everyone in this world that i know i mean and people think of the think of their like yesterday in our discussion the man says he's getting better because he can take a vacation right so in a way he has invested his thought You see what I'm getting at? No. You still don't see. Well, let's try me. This is what we try. People do invest their... But would you mind changing the words? Not invest. Move away from this. All right, we'll move away. We'll try another way. We think what we think is, is, un important. is important. That Keep it at that. We, what we think is important which is our prejudice, our ideas, our, our ideas, our ideologies, exactly. our experience. We think that's important. Exactly. Now, you're, now we, you're getting it. Yeah, now we're getting it. Now what is that? No. No, not what is that. <coughs> Why have they become important? Well, but they start out important. No. Why have... I have an experience, suppose, or I come to some definite conclusion. Okay, all right. I've thought a great deal about it, read about it, talked to people, and I've come to a, diff a conclusion that's final. Right, right. In that finality, there is a certain sense of, at last, I've understood. This is what I must do, right. or not do, and proceed from there. 
Right. Now, what is the question? If we put it from there. From there, the question is, how did it get to be that you think it's important. That it's important and that it's final. Because it has happened to me, and I have seen all the implications of it, mm -hmm. all the implications of an accident or a, a, I've reasoned it out, and I said, this is so. Yeah. But the difficulty is, you come along and say it's not so. Yeah. Then I I hold on to what I've come, my conclusion. Hold on to my conclusion. Because I say it's not. You mean it's simply no, in reaction? you say it's not. Well. Yeah. Your conclusion is wrong. Unless I'm willing to listen to you, examine it, then I'll ch change it. But if I'm not willing to listen to you, examine it, I won't check. I won't I say, that's what I think. Yeah, but before you already thought it was important, what you thought. Yes, sir, because it's happened to me. So it's, it's me that's the issue. Yeah, because I... Because it happened, it happened to, me. to me. So that you've invested me with importance. Yes, me becomes the important. Why? That's... Uh, I, your question now is quite different. Why human beings all over the world have given importance to the idea of the me? Yeah, yeah. Such importance. Huh? Such importance. Tremendous huh? importance. Yes. The whole world circles on. Right. From now, but, and I, so what does it? You know, what, do you mean, the, what does it? I mean, what? in other words, why? Why does? Uh, why do? Why do human beings give importance to their own self-centered right. activity? Right. That's right. Why? Is it because they think they are individuals? Mm -hmm. separate from everybody else, and therefore because they are individuals, it's like building a wall around oneself, mm -hmm. right? and not let any other thing interfere with that centre. And that naturally then it becomes important. When it naturally, why naturally? Because that's the only thing I have. So having made this wall, then I'm taking in, like I'm taking in things that are building me up, so to speak. And therefore, that's the only thing I have left it with me. So, because I've made this... Not I'm only because of that, right. but because I've, through education, through religion, and so on, so on, I have, my brain has been programmed to think I am an individual. Right. And being an individual, I must protect myself against you, against the environment, so on. Right, right. So, to, in the act of protecting myself, it becomes very all important. The act becomes very important. Right, right. And that makes... So, what you're saying, too, is that, that therefore, all of these illusions that I build up... S spring from... Spring them. from that. In other yes. words, it's necessary, like, getting more evidence. So it's really, why does this happen, this me? I wouldn't put it, why? Why put it around the other yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, it's not... Why have... Why has humanity, human beings all over the world, have become so terribly self-centered? Huh? Mm -hmm. Would that be right? Yes, yeah, that's, that's good. Why, sir? From your uh, training, from your analytical point of view, mm -hmm. as a doctor and psychotherapist and so on, why do you think they have given importance to this self-centered, egotistic, 
self movement, mm-hmm. which is actually separative movement. Separate, right. right. Which is divisive movement. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, I think that the reason is that the, that thought itself offers, you know, thought simply appears in the brain. And that thought offers the security of the self, or the me. In so other words, it creates the yes, me. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Well, I'm asking, have, after having created the me, which is the image I have about myself, right. why have we given such importance to this? That's, that's I'm asking I, you. I know you are. And I, my answer is, I hate to use the word security, but it seems that the me provides the security. Now there, I think, is a question. Why does the me provide such security, or seem to provide? Or is it that I am seeking security, fundamentally? Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. And the uh, feeling that all my activity must be within the area of my own experience, my own judgment, my own values, my own egotistic movement. Right, right. But what, I mean, it seems to me you're saying, you're you're going backwards uh, there. No, sir. Look, sir, let's begin again. Human beings all the world over have built up this illusion that Self-centered activity is a self-protective, mm-hmm. defensive, aggressive, mm-hmm. and one lives in that area, right? Right, right. And I know nothing else. But there must be some appeal or something inherent in us as human beings that this is that this happens. In other words, that it's so quickly get you know that, that you can take the young child and it happens so quickly that the the this self-centered it's literally like i gave you a shot of heroin and you said ah i like it and you be, you say i want more of it and it's as if the happening of the self the me is like a shot shot of heroin you get a little and it's like immediately it just builds that you're addicted to it it's really an addiction Let's look what? at it as an, what addiction. Is an addiction. The me, and the need, the need for security is an addiction, and the me as it like a shot of heroin, which offers that drug. In other words, you are yearning for security. I come along and say to you, "Look, I'm going to shoot you up with a little me," and yes, you sir. become. You know no, what I mean? Let's begin. I understand what you mean. Let's begin again. Okay. Sure. Why do we seek security? Because we're insecure. So, are we insecure? Yes. Or we imagine we are insecure. You understand my question? Mm -hmm. I want security. I must have security. Mm -hmm. Physical security. Clothes, food and shelter and so on. I must have a job in this rotten society. Right. I must have uh, somewhere where I can be quiet by myself, Mm -hmm. with my family, with whatever it is. Why have human beings, that's my fundamental question, have given importance to the me, to thinking uh, I must protect myself? Because the world is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. It began probably a oh, million years ago when man began to come into being. Mm-hmm. He had to protect himself, the wild animals, why everything was chaotic. Mm-hmm. So perhaps from there began the, or- the origin that I must protect myself. Animals do. Mm-hmm. A deer, which is being chased by a, a leopard, his instinct is to run away. Right, right. 
and poor unfortunate, the leper is quick and catches him, kills him, and so on. Mm. And also the deer escapes sometimes, fortunately. So from there we have inherited mm -hmm. this sense of, I must protect myself. Okay, yeah. And I'm asking, is it possible to protect yourself in isolation? After all, the very idea of protecting myself br brings about isolation. Right, right. Right? Now, is there security in isolation? Well, if the deer runs away, is he seeking it in isolation? No, no, poor, no, no, poor thing, he just wants to survive. Just wants to survive. And also... Is that possible, that maybe that's one of the things that causes the me, that he just wants to survive? That's a natural instinct. But I say Physi maybe the me is... is no, is sir, physically I must survive. Right. Right? Well, then we must get confused and think the me is physical survival. No. Physically I need clothes, food right. and shelter. I must survive. I must have a job, hmm? and right. so on. Right. Yeah, room, and so on. Now, to, is there psychological survival at all? No, but I, you just, I just had an, an, a thought. There's no psychological survival. Why do you say that? Who well, say why? I mean. Do, Everybody wants to psychologically survive. But actually, do you think... The me is, is the psyche. Uh, right, right. <laughs> but in some way it's confused with the body. Which is identified. Uh, identification takes place because in identification I put out roots. Exactly. And having roots, I feel secure. And you identify with your body. Which is my body, yes. my name. So I am my body, oh, yeah, I body. am my name. name. I am what I'm doing. Exactly. And so on. But isn't that similar to what the deer is doing when he's running away? No, he... a deer is, doesn't think about himself. Exactly. But there I'm saying no that there's a crossover there. There is no thought operating probably in the deer. Okay, we'll accept it that. It just wants, you know, frightened and runs. Yes. And when we go into this me and identification... Then all the big trouble begins. But isn't that in a way a, cross, a sort of a wrong continuity from the deer? You know what I mean? Not quite. Well, in the sense that you say we've inherited this need for survival, like we, from the animal. We have, been, we have inherited the instinct to survive. So we've inherited the instinct That's to survive. Sir, please let's admit one thing. It's natural instinct to survive. Exactly. It is, I mean, every little act of cell wants to survive. Right, right. And <coughs> to survive physical necessities, I must have right. job and so on. But a lot of people think me is a necessity. Are you sure what you're saying? Yes, I mean, I think that there's a... Fear. Me is essential. They haven't even examined what is the me. Ah, but that's, they still feel it as essential. They feel... No, sir, they feel... In the me, there is security. Yes. In the psyche, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I cling to the image of myself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But we never examine what's the psyche. Mm -hmm. If there is clinging to something which I call me, hmm? mm -hmm. Maybe an illusion. So we have to examine what is the psyche. Has it any uh, 
ground on which you can stand firm, or is it just a, a movement, mm -hmm. a series of movements? I don't know. I'm, I'm following you. Um. And these movements, experiencing all and so on, right. is the me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know nothing else. Well, except it, one question that comes up there is that in the act of experiencing, there seems, to, as, I, as I'm looking at it, there's a sense that the me appears in the act of experience. In other words, it's uh, Just a minute, sir. Just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> is that so? I have an experience I had this morning, a car ran into me. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It hurt me. And the pain is registered. The accident, the pain, is recorded mm -hmm. in the brain. And I remember it. I remember it for a month or two. And so I'm very careful after that. Right. Not to be run over. Mm -hmm. Not to be knocked down. The remembrance is a co has a continuity. That continuity is the self. The remembrance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Remembrance of things past. Mm -hmm. The incidents, the accidents, the pleasures, the that's that is that memory has a continuity. Memory. Mm -hmm. And memory then says I've had this experience. I must be careful. Right? Right. So there is no other factor than the continuity of memory. Except next time I have an experience, what happens? I add it to that. Uh, of course. Yeah. Continuous addition or subtraction. Yeah. So that so has no, is memory to which which I think which is actually a continuity. What value has that? Apart from a skill, mm -hmm. a doctor. You have to have a continuous memory in order to examine me. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. A series of not um, time, series of accumulation of knowledge and so on. You're the doctor. Mm -hmm. So there is only, I'm saying, continuity of memory. That's all. Memory is me. There is no separate me from memory. Right? Right, right. And that gives me security. What is that? What? The security you get in that memory. I'm knowledge. Uh, knowledge of my accident, of my pain, of pleasure, the things past. That is the structure of memory based on experience and knowledge. I see. And that gives, that brings to me a sense of, no, I would, that brings a sense of continuity, which is the me. If the me is not something separate from memory. Right. So m memory is the only thing that continues. And that's security? Yeah, naturally. Well, that's what gives no, us... No, you see, sir, no, no. What has continuity seems to appear to give security. That, that's the question. What, uh, what's the appearance? Sir. Yeah, what memory is the only factor 
in our lives that has continuity. Right. And that's a great... Yes. You said, and what is memory? It's the storing of the past. What? No, things of the past, right? Right. Not of the future. No, it's only the past. Past. It's so, only the past. So, you're going to discover, we're going to discover something extraordinary, that is, the past has continuity, right. modified, but the past continues, right? Right. So, that which has continuity, though modified, is the only source of security. That's Anything that breaks up death mm-hmm. uh, say death, let's take death. That ends that, that stops it. Yeah. So I'm frightened of it. Exactly. Anything that interrupts that continued. Yes. So memory is the center of the psyche. Mm-hmm. And that memory has continuity, and therefore that which has a series of movements, similar movements, I feel safe. There is, it brings a sense of safety, security. Mm-hmm. So memory brings security. Right. Right? Between people. And is that security? That's what I was going to ask. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's I don't. And it's not how secure. Can it, it can't no, be secure. Just see what we have done. Yes. We human beings want continuity. Yeah. And that continuity we find in memory, in remembrance, in the thing, the 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 record in the brain that has continuity. Mm-hmm. And so, there is not only a sense of permanency, mm-hmm. and also a great sense of security in memory. Right. Now, what is, what is memory? To remember, huh? to remember to keep to the right side of the road in America right. or in France, but in England's left side of the road. Right. To remember the address I'll come to. So memory is something... Go on, sir. Memory... Yeah. Yes. Uh, memory. See what is happening. Yes. Yeah. Memory is, is put together by past incidents, which are dead, gone. I have lost my brother, my son, they're gone, incinerated or buried or finished. But the memory remains. Yes. Memory is not the actual. No. The gone. actual is the absence. Uh, it's gone. Yeah, that's the but actual. But I've got a photograph of my son on the mantelpiece. I keep on looking at it. The picture is not the brother, son. Memory is not the son or the brother. Mm-hmm. So, memory is what? Always going back no, over. N- no. I've, got, I've lost my son or brother, right. my mother, whatever it is. And there is the picture of them on the mantelpiece to remind me. To reawaken the memory, no, right? Yeah, I keep on thinking about yeah. it. Memory. We exactly. keep to memory, okay. not thought, for the moment. So that memory is something which is. That memory represents something that is gone, dead, finished. Hmm? Yeah. So memory is not real. I don't. Yes. Anna, that's a tremendous. You follow, sir? Memory is not the 
actual son or the brother. So me- memory, though it appears to be have continuity, it is a a, f- a dead thing. Mm-hmm. So I seek security in something dead. Yeah. No. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. If my son or brother was living, I I found security with them. Mm-hmm. I loved them. They loved me. I felt safe with them. They would protect me. They would see to my old age and so on. They, I'm safe. Mm-hmm. But they're gone. Never to return. Right. But the memory of them remains. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is memory of a dead past thing. So memory which which appears to have continuity is a dead thing. Not the actual living brother and son. Right, right. So what am I cling what am I cling what is thought clinging to? Or uh, li- li- Clinging to something that's dead. Oh, that's great, sir. To discover I'm clinging to something huh? mm-hmm. that's gone. So much water on the bridge. <laughs> right. So, there is no security in memory. Right? Right. right. But to go to find that out, we are unwilling to do that. There, what is that unwillingness? Uh, it's habit, tradition. I've been programmed for the last two thousand years to worship a symbol called Jesus, hmm? or the Indian t- five to ten thousand, and I'm stuck there. I think there's more to it, Krishna. Of course, let's go more. into it a little bit further. It's I've been programmed, but again, if I've been programmed in some way, I I find it something something holds it there. What holds it? Just That's the program? A, no, I think uh, it's more. Go into it, sir. What you, just yeah. made. I have been programmed as a Dutchman. Hmm? I would better no. We'll take a Catholic, because it's much more precise. I've been programmed for two thousand years to be a Roman Catholic, to worship the symbol, the cross, to follow the rituals, to be baptized, to Mm -hmm. obey the Pope. That's my conditioning. That is, the brain cells have been conditioned to that. Yes. Right? And my son, or my grandson and grandson grandson, I insist they be conditioned that way. Because I feel safe in a society who say we are all Catholic. Right. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. That program is memory. And when I say I am Catholic, all the uh, two thousand years of memories is there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Right, right. So I'm clinging, holding on to something that's gone, that has no validity. Jesus may not have existed, but we have invented the original sin, and you can't escape from it. Only somebody else can save you. I've been programmed to that. But you're doing it. I'm doing it because I'm a, I'm a, I'm an automatic machine where this is concerned. But in the business world, I am not an automatic machine. Mm-hmm. You well, see, there a, I'm active. I'm changing. I'm moving. Yeah, you're giving up. You're not giving operating up. on no. memory. But here you're operating with memory. Here I'm operating on tradition, on a program, mm-hmm. on a program which has conditioned the brain cells. Right? But That's mechanical. You're doing so it, though. I'm, I'm mechanical. 
the computer is mechanical, it's doing. Mm -hmm. It's producing, it tells you what to do. Is there anything that's making, making you do it? Uh, no, the programming itself is making me do it. Simply automatic. I don't know about that. It's so something that just appeals made, to you about just it. Made, sir. Just look at it carefully. You're, I'm programmed as a Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. And you're programmed as a Buddhist. Let's assume. Okay. Neither of us are... I'm not programmed to be Catholic, mm -hmm. neither of right. you are a Buddhist. But let's assume I'm programmed as a Roman Catholic or I'm a Muslim, Islamic cult, and you are a Christian, if you prefer. Now, I have been programmed for the last 1400 years to be a Muslim, mm -hmm. to read the Quran, to follow it, <coughs> go on my knees to, facing the West. I've been programmed. The program is working. Mm -hmm. And the wo working of the program gives me the security of the I. I am doing it, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you are doing the same thing in a different way. Going to church every mm -hmm. Sunday, genuflecting, obeying the Catholic hierarchy, mm -hmm. exactly the same thing in a different pattern. Right. So it is the program that is operating, nothing else. And if the program is operating, how could anyone not be in that program? She comes along, he comes along, yeah. what, look what you're doing. Do you think they can hear? I, I, unless, say, sorry, I won't listen to you. You are a heathen, you are an uh, evil person and shut you up, then of course you can't hear. But there is always, in an intelligent inquiring mind, there is always a little spark of doubt. Right, right. And I, I see, see, that person tells me, look what you're doing. You are merely living on a dead memory, mm -hmm. which is programmed. Your life is mechanical. Your thinking is mechanical. Because you are fundamentally living according to a program. Even in the business world it is the same. Mm -hmm. Right? But you know, it, uh, it's hard for, for a person to see their own programs. Uh, I mean, for instance, take uh, a take a person. Let's let's take a more, mon, uh, perhaps more practical thing. Take the businessman. The businessman is programmed to think in terms of making money. money. He's programmed in terms, or take a doctor. He's programmed at such levels as to think of uh, of himself as separate from his patient. Or he separate. Uh, he can. He programmed to think in terms of knowledge. You you pass over knowledge, but that whole thing of pro knowledge itself, in the good places where it works well, gets into other places into That's the right, program. You know what I no, mean? Sir, I understand. But if we both agree or see the fact that our whole psyche is being programmed. I'm talking psyche for the moment, right. which is, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Jew, I'm a Arab, I'm a Hindu, I'm so on, so on, so on, communist, which are all ideologies, right? Right? Ideologies. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the ideologies have been put together by thought, right? Clever thought, crooked thought, irrational thought, and so on. It's still thought, right? Now, that thought has been programmed. Sure. And so deeply. Uh, obviously. I mean, it's so, it, the me after itself. After 3,000 years and 5,000 years, uh, you can't help being deeply programmed. But so deeply in the sense of this me, where we started, if we go back and start over... The program is me. Exactly. Now. 
the program is me and the very program the very act of being me is program yes sir now that, am, but that's I a phenomenal acting, thing i am acting like a computer according to the to what i'm programmed well that's phenomenally so, different see, see the, that see yeah. the importance of this how deeply rooted it is. Yeah. The inheritance, the, the tradition, the, inherit the heritage, the genetic, all that is born from the animal and so on gradually to man, and all that is great experience, knowledge and so on, which is the past, Huh? Yeah. And I'm living. The my the brain is living in the past. Yes. Huh? And the past is a program. The very act of living in the past is a yes, program. Sir. Yes, sir. The act of living in the past is a program. The brain is a program. So, the me is a program. And therefore, what does a human being do exactly. when he realizes? That means there is no freedom. None. You may None. talk about freedom of will and all, that's nonsense. Hmm? Uh, it's like a machine, but more clever, more subtle, more uh, inventive and so on, the brain. But it is conditioned, it is programmed, and as long as one lives in that area, there's no freedom. It's a like a, a clever, a, a, a machine that quickly adjusts itself to various factors, hmm? mm -hmm. impressions and so on, so on, but it's still a, a brain that's been programmed that can only th think and th think, right? Mm -hmm. And right. the thinking is limited. Yes, it's right in the program. Like, uh, that's all. To First of all, to realize that is a bit of a shock to me. Right. I, Matt, I, the other day we were discussing with some well-known scholar and scientist and so on. He was, the scholar was conditioned by his knowledge, right? right. He has read an inf great deal, Asiatic, philosophy and Western philosophy, religions and so on, he's got tremendous knowledge which has conditioned him. Exactly, yeah. So, when you say, please, let's put, a, put us away, aside all your knowledge about something, let's go into the whole idea of knowledge, how it binds. And it what took, did he say? It took some time, he refused. He, and then he began to quote Bronowski and the others who said, knowledge helps man to ascend. I mean, this, so this, this whole concept of knowledge, helping man to ascend, seems so utterly nonsense to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we have had 7,000 years of war, which has brought us enormous knowledge, Mm -hmm. right. Killing with right. a stone, with an arrow, then with a gun, with a gun, and so on. We, till now, we have got the atom bomb. Exactly. Yes. Huh? We got increased knowledge. Knowledge. And we'll take another ten thousand years, adding more and more and more. Perhaps we'll be able to wipe out the whole earth. Well, we'll have that much knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, the point is, sir. I am programmed. I accept that. Suppose I accept it completely. Hmm? Do you accept it? I suppose I said for the okay. moment. Yes. You come along and say, look, my friend, you have no freedom here. Hmm? You are just a, 
machine. Hmm? Mm-hmm. So, a, a, a very clever, intelligent machine, mm-hmm. which you are. The brain is a machine, can react and all the rest of it. And as long as you remain, the, the brain remains in that area, it is never free. Its energy is limited. Its capacity is limited. Though technologically you have advanced within the last three. Yeah. Let's, can we take right here, take a look here. I have no freedom. My energy is limited. Okay. Now, there's an implication there that I'm to think about having more freedom or having more energy. Or is there perhaps yes, this perception when, of. When you think of the more. That's what I'm getting it's at. It's the same movement. Same movement. So it's my perception of my me- mechanization and my perception of the constriction of my energy that's at issue. Yes. Isn't that it? Yes. And that's not only that's issue, sir. I want. Let's put it down this way. Suppose I realize that I am programmed, all of me, biologically right. as well as psychologically. Right. And you come to me because you have investigated much more. Mm-hmm. You are a doctor, you have gone into this, you have studied various things, and you say, Look, my friend, you have no freedom. You are like a, like a very good, subs- subtle machine. Mm-hmm. In that, because it is automatic, limited, you are creating infinite trouble for yourself, pain for yourself, conflict for yourself, and you have created this society, and therefore you and society are creating hell on earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By going around inside uh, of our... In that limitation. Right. You point that out to me. Then I say, please, I see the fact. Help me to break through it. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. And you say to me, No, I won't help you. Because you have to break, you have to see the truth of this. And you're asking me to help you, is the system itself. Yes. So right. I, you tell me, Don't do that. Don't ask my help or ask the help of anyone. Including God. Can we stop right there? How is it that when you ask me to help you, that that really just is another way to show my conditioning? Really? Yes, I've acknowledged. It I've is a, that because yes, you're I, making yourself into a, a thing for me to fix. Really? No, I've acknowledged that I've been programmed, caught in a trap, right? Huh? And I can't get out. I, th- I think I can't get out. Right? So what can I do for you? Therefore, I come to you. Wait, wait. I come to you. You are a doctor, a psychologist, secretary, you are well known, blah, blah, blah. I come to you. And I say, please, so this is my state. I realize that which is, um, that if one lives on a dead thing, it becomes narrow, limited. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I'm creating conflict not only between me and my wife and society. I'm, I live in conflict. Right. Help me to understand the nature of memory, the programming, the root of conflict, and show me or help me to get out of this blasted hole. That's what all of us are asking. Exactly. They go to church for that purpose, temples to prayers, right? Mm-hmm. Help me, O oh God, invented by thought, help me to get out of this. And nobody has helped so far. Right. After ten million or five, million. nobody has helped me. But I keep on praying, somebody will help me. Is Which is yeah. insanity, you understand? That is yeah. neuroticism. Well, what do you think it is, though, that, that the act of... What do you think it is about the program that breeds asking for help? 
No, it is not asking for help. When you come along and point out to me how the limitation of being programmed, then I begin to look at it. Mm -hmm. But right? then you ask me for help. Then I ask you for help. So, but that's part of your program, to no, ask me for help. No, it's not part of my program. No? No. Yes, in a certain way, yes. That's part, but, yes. I, but I moved out of that. I come to you for help, mm -hmm. just listen. And you say that's part of your nasty program. I say, yes, quite right. But all the same, let's inquire into it. Please, let's, let's go do together. It together. Okay. I, you follow? Yeah. So we can talk together. To, together. That means uh, you're not helping me to, to climb out of the hole. Right. We're in this together. Together. Which means what? We're both programmed. We both realize we are both programmed. Exactly. We are in a hole. Exactly. And by talking over, looking over, um, investigating, we begin to see there is nobody going to help you. Or you. Nobody is going to help me or you. Exactly. Both of us. Right? Right. What does that mean? I remain with my program. We're together in it. Yes, you are in. We remain. We remain. Let's put it that way. We remain in the pro, in the hole. Because I'm. I don't know how to get out of it. You don't know either. We remain in the hole, right? Mm -hmm. But what has happened when I say I'm, I'll, I'm not accepted help. I'm not looked to anybody, God or. Well, but wait a second, wait a second. Yes, see that. I came along and I showed you your program. Yes. And so you Did I give you help? No. I didn't? You no. didn't see it? I didn't see it, but you have shaken me. So I helped you? No, sir. No? You have helped me like thunderstorm. Uh, the thunderstorms give a lot of help. I shook you up a little. Uh, you know, nitrogen to the soil. Right. Thunder. Right. So we got three you, minutes. you acted as huh? We got three minutes. You acted as a as a thunder, which is a natural event. We happen to meet. And we say, look, let's go into this. So but what I'm what Am I out of my prog out of the program? Because I could see your program? What? Am I out of the program? No. I'm not I mean I could see your program, no. I'm still in the program. Of course. We're okay. both are in it. We're both are in it, right. I've shown you your program. And you, by talking to me, you discover that you are also programmed. Exactly. Ah, yeah, that's course, quite a discovery. Of course, of course. Both of us discover it. I Not see. you don't. Not me. I just, I have this insight or I saw it. Sir, when I realize I'm programmed, the fact, mm -hmm. I realize all human beings are programmed. Right? I watch it. It's so. All human beings of are programmed. Course. Mm -hmm. Except those who say, sorry, I've been programmed, I'm out. Not I. It is not, I'm, the brain is no longer conditioned. That's quite a long process. Long process that needs tremendous investigation, which is, a, a pro, which is meditation and all that. I won't go into all that. But the fact that memory has continuity and in that that gives us security. Continuity gives us security. Right, mm? right. Memory is a dead thing, not a living thing. You can't have a memory about a living thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I am living with dead things. My life is you would say when I live when I live on past memories, I'm living with death, with things that have gone. Yes, yes. Therefore, I'm, and I cling to those memories because it gives me certain comfort, security, and so on. But it is like a holding on to dead cocks. Right, right. Right? Yeah. So, if I realize that, actually see the truth of it, there's a mutation in the brain cells. Yes. 
And there's a which, mutation between us yeah, as we talk the, together. The brain cells are, hmm? And therefore, it is possible to be free to totally climb out of the hole. Finish. Just hold that wide shot. I've found something new. Huh? Just hold that wide shot. What'd you say? I found something new. <laughs> Me too. It's like, it's like Christmas, right? Presents. <laughs> this time. You see? We're just giving them a little pale. My brain is very selective. Selective memory. Very, very selective. All the things that have happened to me gone. Literally gone. They, there is a the record remains. But not the content of the record. Even if you well, is it that the, the content remains but the selective apparatus? No, sir, the other way around. I'm right, you just see me. You have to have memory to drive a car and cut it. All the things they did to me, mm-hmm. which was recorded, mm-hmm. that record has no depth. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. feeling, no... No, yeah. no, it's no, no stickiness. No, no, no. Nothing too, stuck to uh, it. That's too dirty. Right, right. So, the brain has now... I've noticed... I've gone into this. Uh, 